Okay, so you've read the question and you've tried it, and if you got the answer, which is about 23.4 meters per second, then you're good. Go to the next video. If you didn't, let's take a look at how to set it up. Because often I know my students, they get stuck on this problem, even though they know how to do some projectile motion problems. So let's just see what their troubles are. So we've got a little bit of a diagram here. The situation looks like this. The angle of this ramp is 30 degrees, and the height is one meter. No big deal. The width of Springfield Gorge is 50 meters. And we're not told the velocity. That's what we're trying to find. And we do know the angle, though, must obviously be 30 degrees, because he's coming off the ramp. So this angle is also 30 degrees. As with all projectile motion problems, we're going to break it up into x and y. So I'm going to say that I'm calling x that way. I'm calling y positive, which means, of course, that I can say Vx would be positive, dx time. And in the y direction, I've got V1, V2, delta D, delta T, and I've got the acceleration. Now, I'm just calling these V1 and V2. Technically, of course, this is V1y, and this is V2y, and this is Vx. Okay? I just call it Vx, Vx, because it's the only Vx, and I call it V1y, V1, because Vx is always the same. So V1 and 2, they've got to be the Y. But you will see it called V1Y or V1 vertical or something in other books. Okay, so what givens are there? Now, we don't know the X or Y components of the velocity. We do know the horizontal range is 50 meters. We don't know the time, just like all projectile motion problems, the time really connects the two sections. So the times are the same, of course. Bart's just one thing. We're breaking his motion into two, but he is actually at the same place at the same time. So the times are, of course, the same. Looking in the y direction, we don't know anything about v2. What is the y displacement? That's a common problem here. He started at the top of the ramp, and by the time he went down, he went up some height. We don't know how high, who cares. He went back down. At the end, he landed here one meter below where he started. So up is positive. His total displacement is one meter down. I've got to say negative one meter. His acceleration, of course, is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, this is the point that normally my students can get to on their homework, and then they come back and say, Mr. Moore, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't solve this. I couldn't solve this. I don't know three things. I don't know two things. I don't know what to do. But we haven't used all the given, so I ask them, what other given information haven't we used? And eventually they come up with that 30 degree thing. Right. So we want to get out of the habit, this is a grade 12 problem really, so we want to get out of the habit of these little question marks, because they're not really very helpful. We don't know Vx and we don't know V1, but we know something about them, right? We know the original velocity, V, had an angle of 30 degrees, so we know that Vx plus V1 equals v. And we know the angle. We can see that vx is v cos 30. And we can see that v1 is v sine 30. And of course, sine 30 and cos 30 are just numbers. Now we have more information to work with. Let me just sort of put on one more thing. Sine of 30, that's a half, so that's v over 2. The cosine of 30, well, that's root 3 over 2. So root through root 3v over 2. If you don't know your special angles, it's no big deal. The calculator will tell you that this is 0.5v and this is 0.866 or whatever. So you don't need to know that. If you got stuck, try it now. Now that you have the givens, I think you should know what to do. X direction, Y direction, plug it in, solve, and try it again to get the answer. I'll, of course, finish it right now. Anyway, so the x direction, the only equation that governs the x direction, VDT is uniform motion, so velocity equals displacement over time. We can see, therefore, that root 3 V over 2 must equal 50 over T. And looking at this guy, we don't know anything about V2, so I've left that question mark there. I'm going to use equation number 3, which is something that happens a lot, v1t plus a half a t squared. Okay, subbing in there, I get negative 1 equals v times t over 2 minus 4.9 t squared. And now looking at it, I can see, I hope that I have two equations, two unknowns. And you all know that you can solve a system of equations. Two equations, two unknowns, there is a solution, so now it's just a matter of doing a little bit of work. 
the most direct method would probably be to rearrange this equation for t and substitute it into here and get your velocity. But it turns out in this case, it's just a little simpler to solve t first. So I'm going to take equation 1 here, and I'm going to rearrange it for v. Speed equals 100 over root 3t. Of course, I've multiplied the 50 by 2 to get that 100. Now I'm going to shove that, I'm going to substitute that into 2, and that will give me negative 1 equals 100 over root 3t times t over 2 minus 4.9t squared. My t's are going to cancel. This will become 50. Now I'm going to rearrange a few more things, so I'm doing multiple steps here. You have all the time in the world to do all the steps on paper. I'm going to move the 4.9 over, it becomes positive. I'm going to move the 1 over, it becomes positive. And then I'm going to end up with 50 over root 3 plus 1 equals 4.9t squared. And therefore, t squared equals 50 over root 3 plus 1, all divided by 4.9. And then I take the square root, and I will get a time which is equal to 2.469 seconds. But I'll just leave it in my calculator, because I'm going to go back to this equation. I'm going to rearrange number 1 for v. And I'm going to get that v equals equation number 1, 100 root 3 over t. Oh, I already did that. 100 over root 3 t. And I've still got this number in my calculator, so I just multiply by root 3, I flip it over, I times it by 100, and I get a speed of 23.38 meters per second. And that's what the question asked you for, for the speed, so in my final sentence I'm going to write, therefore, the speed was 24 meters per second, because the question only had two significant figures. 30 degrees, 50 meters, ooh, do I need to round to one? Nope, 1.0 meters was the displacement. Good.